When I listen to my clients, I'm oftentimes in awe by the allegations they'll say about men, like all men do this or all men do this. And I have to stop them and say, well, no, that's really not true. What dictates how a man responds in a relationship is largely part of what kind of norms they got. What were they told by the people who love them most about being a man? What were they shown in school? What did the community support as what is a man? And also what did, you know, what kind of pressures were put on them and what expectations? Who told them the rules about what it meant to be a guy? And when I listen to men and I work almost exclusively with men, They'll tell me, well, my dad told me, you know, you never cry, just get up and go after it. Or mom would tell me, you know, the most important thing are your grades or the most important thing is how you perform at this swim meet. And maybe the parent didn't come right out and say that, but the boy noticed that there were different expectations for him rather than his sister. She was allowed to fail, for example. He was not. As a psychotherapist, I've seen three major areas that we make big myths about how we condition and raise boys. And those boys grow up and are the men that we're now dating, married to, and trying to have a relationship. And depending on the severity of the parents or the people who love them most in their close-knit community, how the severity of what they told them a guy was, the man before you either failed at those and carries that with him or he stepped up and he became those things. The problem is whichever side he erred on, the when you're in a relationship with them, that has repercussions because a guy who has been taught that he has to perform to be loved really will always be performing for you. And if he's a, he'll get panicked if he can't, he'll get angry. And the reason is because he, fa he fears losing your love. And unless you talk about that stuff, you're never gonna know. So what are the three myths? The first of these is showing weakness is bad. When a boy is taught that any kind of weakness he has, he can't talk about, he can't share, he can't emote about it, you're telling him to disown any weak feeling he has. In a relationship, that means this guy can't be vulnerable. He can never own up to his mistakes. He can never share or be vulnerable with you about areas he feels insignificant or incapable of. When you condition a boy to think that being open about weakness is not manly, you are hurting his ability to feel for the rest of his life. The solution, if you're a grown man now and you have this, is you've got to start, first of all, being aware of when you feel weak or you feel incapable or you feel nervous or you feel a dip in your self-esteem. You've got to be aware of it and then you've got to give yourself permission to feel it and talk about it and accept it ultimately. But the acceptance comes later, depending on the, validity, the validity and the response of your partner. And many times the partner is the one who is putting these pressures on you. Like that's not what a guy does, that's not manly. In that case, it's time to find a new partner or to talk to them about what loving you as as you being their man is going to look like and how you're going to institute these changes. Secondly, you need to perform to be loved. There are numerous boys who are taught you need to get good grades to be loved. Like if your academics are slacking, we won't love you. You need to be the best athlete, not just good, but the best to be loved and to be a man. Um, you need to be financially successful to be a viable man. You need to have several sexual conquests to be a viable man. All of these things are wrong, wrong, wrong. We're taking men further away from their feeling. And then we're getting mad at them because they can't share their emotions. 
They can't open up to us. They can't be vulnerable. And the reason is they were socialized out of their feelings when they were a boy. So how are you going to undo this? You're going to give them permission. You're going to remind them, I love you irregardless of what you do. I don't care if we have less money. I don't care if you're number one on the baseball team. I don't care if you've had other conquests before. I'm not those people. I am the one that really matters. I'm your wife or your girlfriend or whatever. And guys, you have got to stop repeating these tapes to yourself because they're harming you. When you feel unworthy of love unless you're performing, then you will get panicked and fearful if you're with someone who doesn't want you to perform. They just want you to love them and they want to love you. They want you to be vulnerable. They want you to show your weakness so they can relate to you. You cannot relate to someone who absolutely has never made a mistake or does not admit to their weaknesses. And we know everybody has weaknesses because everybody is flawed. Everybody has screwed up sometime. The third myth is that any feminine qualities are bad. Oh, and one of those is crying. Crying is a biological response to being hurt. It's in both genders. Some, some people cry more than others, but it is not feminine or masculine. It is biological. It is healthy to cry. And when you start saying, I can't express feelings or I can't cry, or it's not okay to be sad when my heart's broken or when I'm feeling pain, then all of a sudden you don't say anything. You just stuff those feelings. And soon you don't know those feelings because you're drinking them away, you're medicating them away, you're basically trying to do any sabotaging behavior for yourself that's gonna screw you up because you've never been allowed to feel sad, to cry, to emote, when you have a feeling it was not acceptable in your family your family taught you that men react they get physical they get violent they hit they yell they they do other things that hurt people because they can't talk about their own hurt guys don't fall into that trap you deserve better get to know yourself practice self-awareness Get to know who you are and then once you feel that feeling again, express it. If the partner you're with thinks, thinks that's too feminine or that's not masculine, find a new partner. There's many, many women and men out there who understand what being a man is. And in case you have been misinformed or you got really bad conditioning, a man is someone who is gentle enough because he knows his feelings, he knows what he feels, he likes who he is, he accepts it, and because of that, he doesn't have to prove anything with his fist or his mouth. He's gentle enough to be incredibly strong by being brave in sharing his feelings. He's comfortable in his own skin and because he's able to be gentle with himself, he's able to be gentle with others. That's bravery. That's strength. That's being a man.